In the distant days of the far, far future, it took more than a man to tame the wildest territory in the galaxy. This is my job. It took brave star, strength of the bear, eyes of the hawk, speed of the puma. Let's party! Brave star, a bold new adventure, now on the big screen. Brave star, the movie, rated PG. Once upon a time, civilized man and beasts of the wild lived together in harmony, neither threatening the other's future existence. But unfortunately, the world is different today. Many wild animals are disappearing from the earth because man is hunting them and destroying their natural habitats. The earth's most precious resources are being threatened by the destructive forces of civilization. The number of species facing extinction has reached a frightening peak. It is the aim of this dedicated trio, Tommy, Aura, and Seabird. Seabird, behave! <laughs> this dedicated trio, Tommy, Aura, and Seabird, to protect endangered animals, so once again, all inhabitants of the world can live together in peace. Seabird, Tommy, and Aura have been invited to Africa by their old friend, Harry King. They have driven deep into the African bush. Now, as they sit around their campfire, Harry explains why they are there. Let me ask you a question. Have any of you heard of a unicorn? I have. It's a horse with a horn in the middle of its head. Yes, and you can have three wishes on it, because it's magic. Are unicorns real animals? Yes. No! I'm afraid Aura's right, Tommy. Well, why has everybody heard of them then? Well, let me tell you how the mistake was made. Hundreds of years ago, when Europeans first traveled to Africa, they heard tales of a fabulous creature that looked like a horse with a long spiraled horn in the middle of its forehead. But what had been seen was, in fact, two separate animals, both looking slightly like horses. Well, at least from a distance. But what were those animals? One was an antelope, a form of deer that's called an oryx. And that is a rare animal, especially today. It has two long horns and from a long way could be mistaken for a horse. What was the other one, then? The other was our friend, the rhino. A great big rhino? That doesn't look much like a horse to me. Or me. Maybe not, but remember, those people had not seen a rhino, only heard about them. And stories sometimes can get very exaggerated. And that brings me to the reason why we're here. A rhino. We're going to capture a rhino. Us? Capture a rhino? Why? because of the unicorn's three wishes. You see, a lot of stupid people on this planet think that the horn of the unicorn, or as you know, the rhino, has some sort of magic ingredient. So rhinos are captured, killed, and their horns are cut off. But what do people want the horns for? It is ground into a powder, which humans eat, thinking it will make them bigger and stronger, <laughs> which it won't. So the poor rhinos are killed for nothing. Not for nothing, Tommy. People pay a fortune for this worthless powder. So why are we going to...
to catch a rhino, Harry? We're going to move one to an area with more food, because there are too many rhinos in this area, and food is scarce. Sulfuric, get out there and fire a flare. Open it up. Let's see what we've got. It's a stone cucumber. It's not a stone cucumber. It's a horn. <laughs> it's broken, boss. Listen. No, you fool. A rhino horn. Oh, you mean only a rhino can play it. Idiot. Give it here. Sure, catch. <laughs> Sorry, boss. I've seen shrimps with more brains than you. Now look what you've done. Well, you've got plenty more in there. That's not the point. It looked pointed to me. You'll look pointed in a minute. Nail that crate back up. We'll be in the harbor soon. Okay, we've got the goods. So take us to your boss. Boss, oh, my careless friends. So you have at last arrived with our valuable cargo. But I am informed that owing to an accident, one of the valuable items in that crate is now at the bottom of the harbor. A great pity. So, my careless friends, here is your problem. The item is lost, therefore you must replace it, or regrettably you will be at the bottom of the honorable cover. Okay, kids, all aboard. Let's go and find us a rhino. Yeah, let's get a unicorn. Look, Harry, over there, a huge rhino. Wow, look at the size of those horns. Well done, Tommy. Now let's get in and have a closer look. We'll have to be careful, though. Rhinos are nervous, and if frightened, they're very dangerous. Oh, no! That's all we need. I must get the tranquilizer darts. Hold on tight, kids. Here he comes. Are you both okay? Yeah, but where's Seabird? Oh, he's still in there! Come back, Aura! No! I have to save him! Seabird! That was very brave, Aura. But what are we gonna do now? All the equipment's gone. I managed to grab the rifle and the tranquilizers, but I'm afraid we've lost our water supply. Where do we go? We walk that way and hope to find help. I knew it would be a disaster trusting you with those horns. How was I supposed to know what they were? Shut up! What's this? It's a plane. And you expect that to get us to Africa? Sure. You idiot. The only place that will take us is a hospital. Where'd you get it? From an old friend. Old? Who was he, Charles Lindbergh? Who's he? Never mind. How much did this garbage cost me? That's not garbage. She's a beauty. She cost the whole 25. 25 grand for this? Oh, no, boss. 25 dollars. Does it fly or are we driving there? Don't worry, boss. Just watch these engines go. See? Can't this thing go any faster? Hey, look! Down there, natives. Let's see if they're friendly. Good idea. Bad idea. Get out of here. Oh, why 
we just land? If it wasn't for you, Brick Brain, we wouldn't be here in the first place. Now get that parachute on. Get out and keep track of that rhino. Go! Uh, has anyone seen my lunch sack? I found one like it, but this one's full of silk. Silk? That's what parachutes are made of. So what's that fool jumped out with, then? My lunch! Ah. Oh, uh, children, wake up. We're amongst friends. Well done, Siebert. Where are they going, Harry? I told the chief about our mission, and he sent some of his men to locate a rhino for us. Now all we have to do is wait for them to come back. But how are we going to capture a rhino? They're so strong. This is how. Look. I fit one of these into the rifle. And after he's hit, he'll have 20 minutes. Then he'll sleep for hours. had just camped down for the night when a monster from the sky found them. What kind of monster? A saucer-shaped one with lights. A UFO! <laughs> I very much doubt it. Still, they obviously saw something. Tommy! Where's Siebert? He was here a minute ago. Look! There he is! Let's go get him! UFO. The warriors were right. Quick, let's follow it. This is where it went, but I can't see it anywhere. Should we go back? Siebert says no, so on we go. But Tommy, if the UFO is real, it might be dangerous. Well, Tommy, wait for me. What will happen to Tommy, Ara, and Siebert now? What is on board this UFO? Who is steering it, and where is it taking them? Will the children's good friend, Harry King, be able to find them? I don't know. I just don't know. Their tracks are here, all right, but they just vanished as though they've disappeared into thin air. No tire tracks or any other footprints. B -b Buana, it is Sky Monster which we saw. Sky Monster? Hmm. Let's assume you're right for a moment. I, I wonder, is it just a coincidence that we're in an area where rare rhinos live? No, I think not. Benjamin, I want you to find the rhino we saw yesterday. Yes, Bubuana, we find the rhino, but what about children? First, find the rhino, and then I think we'll find some answers to this puzzle. Come on! I don't know. Let's shout for help again. Someone has to hear us. Help! help! Boss! Boss, over here! It's me, Sulfuric! Help! Help! <laughs> yes! Yeah. Move over, fellas! Let me out of here! <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, boss! What's all that smoke? What smoke? Where? Down there. Wait, I'll steer us closer. Here, give me those glasses. Help! Help! It's me, Sulfuric! Uh, what is it, boss? What's on fire? Nothing's on fire. It's dust. Dust? What caused it? A very rare and threatened species. What is it, boss? And what's threatening it? It's called an idiot, and I'm going to threaten it when I catch it. Now help me land this thing. Hey, Aura, we're going down. Tommy, look straight ahead in front of us. It's, it's sulfuric. 
Why is he running towards us? Unless he knows this UFO isn't from outer space. I bet your Uncle Smokey's behind all this. Closer than that, Aura. I wouldn't be on ah! top of it. Whatever you're up to can't be doing anyone any good. Wanna bet, kid? It's doing my bank balance a lot of good. Not yet it isn't. Now stop arguing. We've got work to do. What sort of work? You'll find out. So, the time is approaching for our friends to deliver the last item in our agreement. But what if they fail? If they fail, then the sharks will feed very well. And if they succeed? Ha! In that welcome event, I will be very happy. And the sharks will still feed well. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, Tommy. I want you to tell me if you've seen any rhinos around here. Why? Never mind why, just answer the question. No, we haven't seen any. Okay, we'll just see if you're telling the truth. I'm going to throw this seal into the water. Then we'll see if he can swim back before those crocodiles can catch him. Put him down! Hey, come here, you! No, no! We have seen a rhino! Put him down! Good, that little joke worked. Here, I think this belongs to you. Just remember to cooperate or the crocodiles get a seafood supper. Hey, Smokey, the boat's ready. Good. You, Sulfuric, get in the boat. Why me? I want you to row downstream until you come to the sea. There you will wait until the boat arrives. You stall them for as long as you can while we catch the rhino. Now get going. But it must be at least 20 miles to the sea. Well, row quickly. Now get on with it. Hey, boss. A king-size rhino. Dead ahead. Ha! We didn't need you kids after all. Okay, Carbone. Prepare the net. Lower away. Quick, Carbone. More gas. Hooray! We've got him. Okay, you kids. We don't need you, so you can go. Enjoy the walk. But you can't just put us out in the middle of nowhere. Oh, yes, we can. Bye. Come on, Carbone. We've got a rendezvous. Aura, help me get some dry sticks. If we start a fire, we'll be safe. Tommy, let's send smoke signals. Maybe Harry will see them. That's a great idea, Aura. But what can we use to fan the smoke with? <laughs> well done, Seabird. Benjamin, look, smoke. No smoke signals. It must be the children. Hurry. You're safe. Oh, Harry! Oh, you found us! Yes, thanks to your smoke signals. Harry, my Uncle Smokey and his gang have captured a rhino. 
and they've used a huge airship to hoist it off the ground. And they said they had work to do as they flew off. And there's something else. Sulfuric has gone down the river to meet with a boat. Hurry up, boss. I think I'm on their menu. Good. There's the river, and there's Sulfuric. And there... is it? Yes, it is. There is the junk. Now take us down, Carbone. Have you got the hacksaw? Oh, sure, boss. Look. Good. We've got about half an hour to get ourselves a rhino horn. Deliver it, and we'll all be rich. Base, there's something very odd going on. Base, we need some backup here. On the double, there appears to be an airship with a rhino under it. I'm going in to get a closer look. Boss, look! A game warden's plane. Blast! It's seen us. Get away! You're too close! Clear off! It's about time that the rhino is here. Just be in time to save that rhino. Harry, look down there. The game warden's plane. It's landing next to the river. I see it. We'll go down and land next to it. Warden, what's going on? ends well. The villains have all been caught. The rhino is on his way to a new home, and you children are safe. What about him? That tranquilizer dot was meant for a rhino, so he'll wake up in about a week with a rhino-sized headache. <laughs> Our young friends have done it again. The rhinos are safe, and Smokey and his crew have been stopped. But what devious scoundrels will Tommy, Aura, and Seabird face next? To find out, don't miss the next exciting episode of Seabird. It is midnight and all's well. Creatures that should be asleep are asleep. And those that should be awake are awake. But hold everything. Who's this? He shouldn't be here. He should be in bed. What's going on? Boss! Boss! It's me! I got him! Let me in! Shh! You idiot! Get in here and be quiet! I got him, boss! Look! More bolts and glue! And it's about time. Where did you go for them? China? Do you think it was a good idea to trade the boat for this? And why do we have to put wheels on it, anyway? You'll find out soon enough. Now take these and get on with it. over the front. We don't want anyone seeing us now. Okay, boss. Start the engines. 
Plus, it works. We're on our way. Of course it works. Everything I make works. It sure is hot in here. Can I open a window? Ah, no! Oh, okay. At last, we're here. And there they are. We'll just get a little closer. Aha! Hello, my little furry friends. Good. Very good. Right, men? Steady. Steady. Now, hold! It worked! We've caught dozens of them. Quick, prepare to pump out the water. Okay, all the water's pumped out. Open it up! Beautiful. Beautiful! There's enough of them in there to make dozens of the finest expensive fur coats! We're rich men! Right, Sulfuric. Navigate us to some more fur coats. Sure, boss. Hey, Carbone. Steer 51 degrees north-northwest by 18 degrees east-southeast. To what? Turn right. Uh, why didn't you say so in the first place? Come on, cut the chatter. Let's go. Down Periscope. Okay, Captain. By my reckoning, we should now be at the next big colony. Take her up. Up we go. Right, let's have a look around. You fool, Sulfuric. Get us out of here, you idiot. Okay, boss. New coordinates. Try 93 degrees east-southeast by 51 degrees north. Okay, otters, look out. That's not an otter. It's a duck. You don't get ducks floating around in the sea. Now try again, Captain Cook. Mm, now what have we here? Ah! Get out of here, quick! We're on a bombing range! Sulfuric, you've got one last chance. If you foul up this time, you'll be the first man to walk the plank underwater. Okay, boss, this is it. 48 degrees west by 48 degrees east. Aha, that's better. Okay, a full hold. Back to base, if you can find it. Hey, this sure is odd. We checked this area out only yesterday, and there were sea otters everywhere. Now, a day later, there's not one left. Hey, Bill, send a message to all other patrols in the area. Ask them to check out the other sea otter colonies. Patrol 15 to 27, come in, please. Receiving you, 15. This is 27. Go ahead, please. Yeah. How are all the otters in your area? Any problems? Over. Just one problem. They've all disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Tommy's cabin, nothing quite as exciting is happening. Hello, Wally B. Hello, Wally B. This is Bodega Bay calling. Hello, Bodega Bay. Yes, this is Wallaby. Go ahead, please. This is the California Marine Preservation Trust. My name is Tony Phillips. We have an emergency, and we need all the help we can get. Over. Go ahead, sir. What's the problem? The problem is our sea otters. We have a few of the last colonies on the planet of these rare mammals. They were almost hunted to extinction by people who wanted to kill them for their beautiful fur. The hunting was made illegal and their numbers are increased, but now whole colonies are disappearing overnight and we don't know why. So we need urgent help to find out what's going on, over. Okay, Bodega Bay. I'm packing my bags now. We're on our way. What's the matter, Tommy? Anything? 
something wrong? I'll explain on the way to the airbase. We're going to California. California? Come on, Seabert. Unload the treasure. Look out! Uh, hurry up, you two. We haven't got all day. Okay, okay. We're going. I hope this is all worth the effort. Okay, boss. Open it up. Shh. Will you be quiet? Do you want the whole world to know what we're doing? Sorry, boss. I said be quiet. Okay. Start unloading. I'm ready when you are. And about time, too. Hooray! Hooray! We've done it! Come on, you two. We've got another trip to make. There's still a few more fur coats swimming around out there. Welcome to California, Tommy, Aura, and you, Seabird. This is Jack Rogers, our pilot. And I'm Tony Phillips. In you get. There's no time to lose. Now here's the plan, kids. We've set up a base camp for you. We have to move on to patrol the northern sector. So in the morning, after you've had a look around, report in and tell us if you found anything. Now goodbye and good luck. Come on, Art. Let's get unpacked and have a look around this place. Siebert's already having a look around. He's heading for the ocean. He'll be all right. There's no one around here but us. The radio transmitter. We need it fast. Funny looking otter. Yeah, big one, isn't he? He'll be a fur coat all by himself. <laughs> Who's a fur coat? You pair of dummies. That's no otter. It's a seal. Hey, wait a minute. What's that it's got around its neck? An identification collar. This ain't no ordinary seal. This is Seabird! Blast it! There they are! Those kids are here as well! Sulfuric, dive! Let's get away from here! Uh, excuse me, boss. What? Uh, did you close the hatch? What hatch? That one! Great idea. Yeah, what? We radio for help. Uh, that's a great idea. No, it's not. No, uh, why, why not? Because we ain't got a radio. It's no good, Aura. He's gone. But where, Tommy? Where? Well, Tommy and Aura may not know where Seabird is, but we do. Far below at the bottom of the sea. Smoky, Carbon, and Sulfuric have gotten themselves into a whale of a mess. Deep in the forests, the otters are caged up with no food or water, forlorn and forgotten, just like our friends in the submarine, which is slowly filling with water. Tommy, look! There's something on the surface, just about where Seabird vanished. I see it. Hello, Bodega Bay? Wallaby to Bodega Bay. Mr. Phillips, come in, please. Over. Receiving you, Wally B. Mr. Phillips, we have an emergency. Seabird has vanished, and we found some strange wreckage in the water. It appears to be oil. Over. Jack, turn this thing around. The kids are on to something. 
Hold on, Arnold. We're on our way back to you. In the meantime, get back to the beach. You may be in danger. Over. Boss, boss, we're all doomed. The only thing that could get us out of here now is, is one of those torpedoes. What are we gonna do? The what torpedoes? Of course, this old sub has torpedoes. Well, so what? That's not going to help us at all. Boss, why are you smiling? Because, my long, thin friend, you have the great gift of being torpedo-shaped. Well, one thing's for certain. Whatever you saw wasn't a whale. That's why we think there's someone else involved here. Hey, wait a minute. I spotted something down there on the beach. Tommy's right. Look, tire tracks leading down into the water. I'll take her down. They lead back into the forest. Let's get out and follow them. Good idea, Tommy. Here, take this. It's a flare gun. If you find anything or need help, fire a flare. Good luck. Hmm. Well, whatever made these traps was very heavy. Look how deep they are. Tommy, look here. I found more. And look, there's seaweed also. Come on, let's see where they go. Tommy, look! It's a cage full of cats. Not cats, Aura. Sea, sea otters. otters! Boss! Boss, please, not me! I can't swim! I'll get my clothes wet! You won't get anything wet, and you won't need to swim. We'll be shutting you in, and it's got a motor. No, boss, please, not me. I'm too young to die. Ah, quit whining. Prepare to fire sulfuric, uh, I mean, torpedo number one. Boss, wait a minute. What if it hits anything? I'll explode. Good luck, sulfuric. Get a boat and get us out of here. Fire! The torpedo away. you two. I think you've solved half the mystery. Stand back, everyone, while I let these poor guys out. They must be starving. Hooray! There, there they, they go. go. Like I said, Tommy, that's half the mystery. The other half is how did they get here? Aura, what's wrong? If those otters were left caged up to starve, what's happened to poor Seabird if he's been caught? Uh, do you think he made it, boss? Anyone could have done it. Easy as climbing a tree. Hey, where's that seal? Uh, hey, boss, I found the seal. Siebert, come back here. That's an order. Hello, Otter. Otter? Hey, you kids. What are you doing here? A good question. Now, what's a good answer? Who are you guys? Cops? No, not cops. Although you will be meeting them in a short while. What do you mean? I ain't done nothing wrong. Oh, no? What are you doing here, then? I, uh, got lost back there, and, uh, uh, I ended up here. With the otters. Exactly, with the otters. Uh, otters? What otters? The otters that you trapped and caged up in here, ready to be killed for their fur. 
What are you talking about? We're talking about your prison rap, friend, unless you tell us who helped you. And where they are, and where the rest of the yarders you poached are. Okay, okay, I'll talk. Oh, it's Smokey and Carbone. They've got an old submarine, which we've been using to trap the otters. But that's not all. The sub sunk with Smokey and Carbone on it. They're trapped, and it's filling up with water. Sulfuric, have you seen Seabert? Hubert? Oh, the seal. Yeah, he's in there with them. And the last otter. Oh, no! Seabert! Come on, everybody. In the copter. You, Sulfuric, show us where the wreck is. How should I know? I wasn't exactly watching when I got out of there. Yeah. How come you escaped? Don't ask. It's too horrible to remember. Yes, there. See, Mr. Phillips? Oil and bubbles. That's where they must be. Good. When you kids mentioned oil, we thought it might have been a sub of some sort, so we called up the Navy. I'm hungry. Shut up. I'm thinking. So am I, boss. Uh, I think I'm hungry. The boss, I think we're in trouble. Thank you. I didn't know that. What? That scratching noise. Listen. Maybe the place has got mice. Whoa, boss! Now what? We're moving! Oh, really? Where are we going, Bermuda? Going up. Look down there. What's happening? They're otters. A circle of otters. How strange. Tommy, jump into the sub. Here, take this ring. Help! Help! Get in the house! Soldier, we don't want them or this. But I believe these gentlemen would like to ask a few questions. Well, Tommy, Aura, we got our orders back and the mystery's solved. So we've got nothing more to do here, but uh, if you kids want a couple of days vacation sometime, we'll come and get you as soon as you radio in. So for now, goodbye. Now where's he gone? Everything is back to normal, for some more than others. But how long before animals are hunted by man somewhere else? Don't miss the next exciting episode of Seabird.
Far from Greenland, in a place called Tibet, the Himalayan hare are in grave danger. These little creatures are mysteriously disappearing from the mountains. Tommy, Aura, and Siebert, although currently unaware of this situation, may be the only ones who can save these animals from extinction. on this frigid evening. Tonight in our series, Furry Animals in Danger, you'll see a very rare and threatened species, the Himalayan white hare. Move, Seabert. Yeah, Seabert, you're blocking the TV. The Himalayan white hare was living in abundance in the mountains of Tibet until a few months ago. Wow, he looks like Seabert. Yeah, Seabert with ears and paws. The furry little creatures disappeared from the area mysteriously, and no one seems to know why. I'm glad we decided to come to Tibet, Tommy. I only hope we're not too late to help the Himalayan white hare. for hours. I could use a rest. Look. There's a village. We can rest there. Gee, the place seems deserted. Hello? Is anybody here? Looks like we're alone. Wait, Tommy. Over there. Look, Tommy. Children. <laughs> Children are always more accepting than adults. Oh, Tanag Minerum. Na me, Lati, Iti, 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 Phonum. I think Zebra just made some new friends. I think you're right. Hello. Hello. I'm the divine master, the wise man of this village. It's lucky for us that you speak our language. I speak many languages, after all. I am the divine master, but you can call me O Revered Master. Okay, O Revered Master. I'm Tommy, and this is Aura and Siebert. Oh, yeah. Siebert left with the children. They really seem to like him. Of course. They've never seen a white hair without paws or ears. Especially such a plump one. But where are they taking him? They're going to make rabbit stew. Oh, no! Siebert isn't a hare, and he's not for eating. He's our friend. They're hungry. White rabbit stew has become a rare treat. We know. That's why we've come. We want to discover the reason for their sudden disappearance. Oh, the reason is simple. It's the Yeti. He and his appetite have taken all the white hair from us. He eats up everything. Come on now, O Revered Master. You know that the Yeti doesn't exist. Everyone talks about it, but no one's ever seen it. I'm sure there's another reason. The Yeti does exist. I've seen it from a distance, and I'll prove it to you. I'll take you to where it lives, in the land of the eternal snow. If you insist. We've reached the beginning of the slope. We must leave the ponies here and continue on foot. Okay, Siebert. You're going to be able to go on your own now. Look, over there! The Yeti! We're almost there! Almost where? Do you see anything? 
All I see is white. Here they are, the Yeti's tracks. Look for yourselves. His foot has got to be at least two and a half yards long. A monster that size probably eats ten rabbits for breakfast alone. Yeah, that would explain the disappearance of the white hairs. But what I don't understand is why he suddenly decided to eat all of them at once. Let's follow the tracks. It'll take the Yeti himself to convince me. Follow his tracks? Are you serious? Yep. You really want to come face to face with Yeti? Papi Ang Bong Yeti. Mami Ang Bing Bang Yeti. Bing Bang Yeti. Yeah! I don't think they want to go, and neither do I. Have a nice trip. Fine. We'll go alone. We don't need a guide. All we have to do is follow the footprints. Be careful. Be very careful. We will. Come on, Aura. Secret, let's hit the road. <laughs> to my ice pick. Yeti must be very wide and heavy. Well, he probably sinks like we do. No. See? His feet are too big. That helps him like snowshoes would. He can move very quickly in the snow. Like Seabird? Yep. Look. Seabird's waiting for us. <laughs> Yeti? We're on our way, Seabird. Tracks. Could there be more than one Yeti? No, look. You see? The tracks of the snow hare. Yeti trapped him and left alone. There's no blood or anything. He must have taken the rabbit back to his den. The tracks look fresh. They sure are. If we hurry, we should be able to catch up with him before nightfall. Come on, let's go. Boy, Seabird sure is getting far ahead. You're right, Tommy. I'll holler for him to wait. No, Aura. You're causing... made us lose a lot of time. I hope we can make it before dark. Look! A cave! Yeti's den! Let's go check it out. Oh no, Tommy! Not all the way inside. Uh, uh, inside we won't be able to see anything. Uh, uh, well, there's no light. It'll be better if we wait here. And uh, uh, when the Yeti leaves, well then we'll get him. Okay, we'll wait. But not too long. Men's voices? Someone got here before us. They must have captured Yeti. Come on, let's go in there. 
There's nothing to be afraid of now. Nothing to be afraid of? I hope. You think those men hurt the Yeti? I don't know, Aura. But we're about to find out. Yeti. Is he dead? They killed him. Here they come. Tommy and Aura are very brave to have entered the Yeti's cave. But who are these mysterious intruders? Are they responsible for the disappearance of the Himalayan hare? And why did they kill the Yeti? I'd sure like to know why they killed the Yeti. Hey, what are you doing here? I'd like to ask you the same question. Who are you? And why did you kill the Yeti? Yeah, why did you murder him? Maybe he devours rabbits, but that's no reason to kill him. He was a very rare creature, and in the name of the SPCA, I... Who is this bozo? He's just a kid. What are you doing here? What are they doing here? This is private property, no trespassing. You'll have to explain this to the boss. Hey, come back here. Don't let him get away. Yeah, don't let him get away. I'm talking to you, idiot. I'm talking to you. Oh. Shut up and get after him, you fool. Phew, that was close. I think we're safe now. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure of that. Ow! Oh, you little brat! Come on, Tommy. Let's get out of here. Oh, sorry, Tommy. Hold on, Aura. I'll get... Oh. Get a load of these kids. They sure full of energy, huh? Let go of me! Oh! Good for you, Aura. Come on, kids. Cut it out. Let us go. These kids are pretty hard to handle. Uh. I think we need some help. I think you're right. Whoa! Whoa! Wake up, Lolo! Come help us! Help! Oh. What do you want? It talks. It's alive. All right. We got you now, and I advise you to keep your dirty little trap shut. Lulu is easy to upset. <laughs> Go on, kid. Be good. Stop moving your hands. Who are these kids? We don't know. I bet they followed you, idiot. You leave tracks everywhere. You're not exactly Tom Thumb, you know. Obviously, I leave tracks. And it's a good thing I do. That's what scares off the locals. Since you jerks woke me up, I may as well go back to hunting. That guy shouldn't disguise himself as a yeti. He should disguise himself as a tortoise. That's about how fast he moves. He's the one killing the rabbits. Yeah, and everybody thinks he's the yeti, but he's just a disguise. <laughs> Oh, look at all this! White rabbit fur coats. Handbags. And fur after ski boots. You rats! Come on, keep moving. <laughs> Sit there. The boss is on his way. Oh, Tommy, what are we going to do? Don't worry. I'm here. I've gotten us out of worse situations. And don't forget Seabird. Hey, where is he? Seabird? Seabird? Shh. Don't draw attention to him. He must be hiding somewhere. Probably waiting for a chance to get us out of here. <laughs> taking so long. We've been waiting here for hours. The boss could hurry up. I can't wait to give him a piece of my mind. You know what, Aura? 
I'll bet I know who the boss is. Listen. I think we have a visitor. Look who we have here. Graphite. My favorite twosome. We know what you're up to, Graphite. You rotten little pest. I thought I left you two behind somewhere in Greenland. It seems like every time I turn around, you two are there to cause trouble. How'd you find me? How'd you know it was me? Elementary, my dear Graphite. The white hair disappears suddenly. There's a big organization behind it. It had to be you. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing all right. Aw, oh, come off it, Graphite. It's not exactly brilliant. This business, rabbit pelts to replace seal skins. That's really low. Obviously. I mean, a rabbit skin trader. I've done better, it's true. But the idea is sheer genius. Classic graphite. The local's accusing an abominable snowman that doesn't even exist. And on top of that, he frightens them to death so they don't even come near the area. <laughs> now, enough of this small talk. Men, get in here. Yes, boss. At your service, boss. Lock these two up in the stock room. Yes, sir. We are not in Greenland now. You don't have any friends to help you around here, so I'll be nice and untie your hands. So, Lulu, how was the hunt today? I didn't get nothing. Nothing? You big oak. I don't pay you to do nothing. And on top of that, you bent my rifle. I'll bend you, too. There, that'll teach you to slack off on the job. Now, get out there and get me some rabbits! Now, get in there! Stop that! You're pacing like a yeti in a cage. So, Mr. Tommy, you say you can get us out of hopeless situations? Well, here we are. What are you waiting for? Jeez, women. Look! Tommy, it's the Yeti! Don't be afraid. Revered Master? The perfect revered master. Hooray! Hooray! Shh! Quiet. Shh. The bandits will hear us. But how did you get here? When your little seal came back to the village alone, I thought you were dead. But he insisted that I follow him, that I follow him with my men. And then? We were walking in the mountains, following the little seal, when suddenly, Bing Bang Yeti. Bing Bang Yeti? Yes. Bing Bang Yeti. The little seal threw himself on the Yeti and bit his leg. So I, in my infinite wisdom, understood that it was just a man in a monkey suit. And we neutralized the impostor. But what about Siebert? Ah, your little friend. He is certainly heavy on the stomach. <laughs> Siebert! <laughs> The bandits! Listen, my men are digging a tunnel so we can escape. What's going on? A rock slide. We're trapped. Clear them away! Immediately! We're trying, boys. It's too heavy. That's no use. <laughs> <laughs> Those boulders didn't fall all by themselves. I'll bet it's those darn kids again. They must have some stupid friends out there. Aha! You are still here. Ah, I see you've been here guarding them. It's about time you did something right, Lulu. Very good. <laughs> Give me five. Now! Nice going, revered master. The Sherpas! You men have come to save us! Let's go! Quick! Ladies first! Yikes! Oh, no, 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 no. oh Seabird, you saved us! 
Let me learn. Learn me. Do what the? Hey! What do you guys think you're trying to do here? What are you going to be doing to me? What? There. The hole is blocked and the entrance too. Graphite's men won't get out too quickly. The entrance is blocked? Yes. You'll see. We'll pass in front of it. All right. Your men do nice work. Couldn't have done better myself. But I think I'll add my own touch. <laughs> Great it's not worth the trouble, Tommy. Without his men, and without this, he can't do any more harm. And it'll take at least four hours for him to get back down the mountain. When he gets down, he'll be frozen solid. Yeah, but he's getting away from us again. Bah, the battle's over. Let's get back to the village and celebrate. There's someone else who really has reason to celebrate. The Snow Rabbit. Thanks to Seabird, Tommy, and Aura, the mountain rabbit will flourish again. He can continue to live peacefully, and his only enemy will be the real Yeti. That is, if he exists. Don't miss the next exciting episode of Seabird. Tommy, Aura, and Seabird have worked hard to protect the animals of the world from the evil schemes of the cruel and greedy. The kids have gone home to Greenland for a well-deserved rest. This day, the Arctic sun is so warm, our friends have decided to have a picnic. Great, Seabird. This will make a wonderful addition to our family photo album. Got it! Aura, do you know where the fish is we brought for Seabird? I wrapped it up in this morning's newspaper. Here, Seabird. A good performer like yourself deserves a break. Papa will love to see these pictures when he gets home from his fishing trip. Hmm, that's strange. It's a story about Panda. I can't believe Panda would do something like that. That picture shows him harming a turtle. Our friend hurting defenseless animals? This just can't be. We've got to get back to the village, Aura, and find out what's going on. Do you recognize that plane? No, but it looks like it plans to follow us home. I've never seen that plane around here before. Aura, stop. That plane is coming awfully close. Maniac, what is he doing? He could have killed us. Let's go home, Tommy. There it is again. Run for it. Tommy, why are they doing this to us? Quick, there's a cave in that hill. Run for the snowmobile. Take a peek. Oh, no, Tommy. It might come back. Let's stay here until we're sure. I don't want them to see the cave entrance. I want to hide the snowmobile in here so they don't know where to look. Please, be careful. Tommy! The plane! <laughs> I don't think they spotted us. Mommy, they found us! What's going on? Look! There are seals in that plane! 
They must have been after Seabird. We've got to save those seals. Who knows where they're being taken? Come on, there's safety in numbers. We've got to help those seals. Look, a recording. It's a trick. What's going on? Where is everybody? This plane must be flying by remote control. It's, it's no use. Whatever is controlling this plane is a lot stronger than I am. We've been flying for so long now. We must be awfully far from home. Tommy, I'm scared. Seabird, what is it? Where are we? dish that broadcasts the signals to the automatic plane and guides it here. Whoever brought us here sure has spent a lot of time and money. Let's take a walk to the end of the runway. Somewhere there's got to be some sign of life. <laughs> what is it, Seabird? Look, Aura, a building. This looks like America. This is an old west town. The towns haven't looked this way for over a hundred years. Where do we go from here? Let's try a telephone. It's dead. The phone's out of order. It's pitch black in there. I can't see a thing. Wait a minute. Somebody painted the windows black. Every window in the street's been painted black. It's locked, Tommy. Is there anybody in there? Sheriff, are you in? What? This doorknob isn't real. It was just nailed to the door. Stand back, you guys. I'm going to kick it down. Tommy, the building's not real either. None of the buildings are real. wall-sized mirror. And look at this, Aura. This club. It's only a prop. It weighs practically nothing. And this looks exactly like my snowmobile. Well, this snowmobile is fake, too. <laughs> I'm afraid that's not real snow, Seabird. It's only a painting. Welcome, Tommy and Aura. Great! Did you enjoy your trip? <laughs> I knew you two seal lovers could so easily be lured into that plane with just a recording of seals. <laughs> you get us out of here, Graphite. Ha! <laughs> Not so fast, you little brat. I have plans for all three of you. We've managed to spoil Graphite's plans time and time again. And if he thinks he can keep us out of his way by kidnapping us, he's sure wrong. Once Papa discovers we're gone, he'll send out a search party. What is it, Seabird? Is there something behind that wall? You know, Aura, there's something strange about this mirror. I'm seeing reflections I can't explain. If it wasn't for this blinding flood lamp, I'd be able to see better. It looks like a film studio in the next room. 
Stand back, everybody. Look, there's a camera set up in here. Gee, Aura, this is the same photo of Panda we saw in the newspaper. Yes, it is. And look, here's Stendhal <gasps> pointing a gun at a panther. Oh, I can't believe this. Something's fishy. The world can't have gone that crazy. Tommy! It's Papa! Threatening baby seals with a harpoon! Oh, not Papa! Graphite's got an evil plan up his sleeve. So, you little creeps have discovered our little setup, have you? Then I have no choice but to keep you captive. Okay, men, lock them up. It's lucky for you, Tommy, that you didn't damage anything other than that lamp and mirror. Since you three have insisted on snooping around, I have no choice but to keep you here until I've gotten all the photos I need. From the looks of those photos on the wall, I'd say your friends are acting quite strangely, wouldn't you say? You tricked our friends into these fake photos by kidnapping them and photographing them against these false backdrops. You know that, and I know that, but the newspapers don't know that they're faked. All I need to do is continue to send these photos of your goody good friends being cruel to animals to the papers, and everything you creeps have stood for will fast lose its credibility. You'll never get away with it. Whoa, but I have. Panda's photo has already been published. This morning, I mailed Stendhal's, and later today, I'm sending my favorite photo of all. Finding this abandoned movie studio has been the perfect location to set up my operations. I have an unlimited amount of backdrops to shoot, and an unlimited amount of fake photos. <laughs> Will Tommy, Ara, and Siebert be able to escape from this abandoned movie studio and prevent Graphite from carrying out his horrible scheme? What is this villain's next step going to be? Well, children, I've just finished developing my favorite photo yet. You see, I took a picture of you threatening me with that phony club. Then I took a cute little picture of that miserable baby seal of yours. And then all I had to do was combine those two photos and voila! A picture of Greenland's youngest seal hunter, Tommy! You fiend! Eh, eh, eh. Temper, temper! Ripping up photos won't do you any good, Tommy! Remember, I've got the negative to those photos safely locked away. So there will be plenty more prints where those came from. Ta-ta! They mean business. Scout around the room and see if you can find a way out. Hey, I think I found something. There. What's down there, Tommy? I think it's a way to get out from under this building. Seabird, only you can fit through this hole. Go through this hole and out from under the building, but be careful you're not seen. Then see if you can get the keys to this room to let us out of here. <laughs> oh, Seabird, be careful. Remember, Seabird, the keys. <laughs> You're cheating. I am not. You are too. Uh-uh. My mother never taught me how to cheat. Oh, yeah? Well, answer me this. How come you end up having four races when I already have five? Gee, I don't know. Maybe the cards weren't shuffled up enough. Look, deal the cards again, and this time, no funny business. One for you and one for me. Two for you and three. Will you hurry up? One for you and one. Oh, give me those. One, two, three. There. Now play. Okay. Jim. 
Now I know you're cheating. Give me those cards. Now I'll do the dealing. Now, cut the cards. What are you doing? Just for that, I'm... What was that? It sounded like a noise. Siebert, you did it. While those kids were foolishly wandering around in my special room, it was easy to photograph Aura driving the fake snowmobile. I simply combined her photo with a photo of my men chasing seals and come up with this. Wait till that little Eskimo girl finds out she's really a murderous hot rodder who likes to mow down defenseless baby seals. <laughs> Ta-da! Feast your eyes on this! What the? How dare they? They're gone! Guides! Guides! Those little brats have escaped! Where are those little pests? Guides! Uh, what's up, boss? You two knuckleheads have let those kids escape! How can I be expected to do my evil best when I have to do your jobs as well? Honest, boss, we were just playing cards when all of a sudden we hear this bottle break, see? So I says to Charlie, hey, I... Shut up! Listen. Who is it? It's Graphite. Graphite who? I'm the guy who signs your checks. Whoops, I'll get you out, boss. What are you standing there for? You're wasting your time! After them! Tommy! Look out! <laughs> You two are marvelous. We were? Uh, yes. Leave it to me. I have big plans for you two in my next picture. Us? Movie stars? Gee, can I say hello to my mom? Everyone on the set. Both of you stand straight. Tummies in, chins up, arms straight, legs together, shoulders back. Put one leg up and touch your finger to your head and hop around. Action. <laughs> Stop tripping and start running. Wow, that boulder sure is light. It's fake, along with these other rocks. Run, run. Fooled by my own phony stone. Get in that Jeep and fix those kids! A boss! Look out! Another one! Relax, stupid. It's another fake. Just knock it out of the way. There they are! Get him! Get him! Wow! Look at that! A mechanical dragon! Come back here! Papa! Harry King and Panda! Kids, what are you doing here? We were kidnapped aboard that robot plane just like the rest of you. Where's Seabird? I don't know! Quick, Tommy, see if your keys will unlock these bars. Okay. Thank you, kids. We've got to stop Graphite from sending more photos to the newspapers. He's trying to discredit us and all that we fought for. What can we do? 
there's a giant robot dragon parked outside. If my hunch is right, it was designed to breathe fire. But I'll need help from all of you. I can't believe you two can be so easily fooled. I can't believe you let them escape. Okay, you're fine. Now turn a bit to the right. Fine, keep going. Veer to the left slightly. I can't believe you could let two little kids and a baby seal get the best of you. What's that sound? A monster! This should warm them up a bit. <laughs> hey! Look, look out. out! Let me through! Watch out! Okay, hold that course. A little to your right. All right. Attention, crew. I've just spotted the photo studio and my scope. The negatives to those false photos are hidden within. Get ready, kids, to fire away. Aye, aye, mate. Yeah! They put a torch to my photo studio! All my negatives will be ruined! Quick, you two grab some buckets of water and put out that fire! Okay, boss. What do you say? We let them use some gasoline. Well, here we are, boss. Woohoo! Oh, my precious negatives! I'll save you! <laughs> I saved you, boss. Gee, boss, I hope they weren't your Sunday pants. Quickly, everybody get into the plane. Let's get going. That transmitter is ruined. It no longer controls this plane. I'll be able to fly us home. I'll get you for this. You'll see. You'll pay for what you did to my movie studio. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Harry King is a good pilot. He brought everybody back to their homes before the day was through. I'm so glad that our adventure with Graphite is all over now. And the only photos we need to think about are the photos in our family scrapbook. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tommy and Aura have managed to foil graphite once again. But you can be sure that he'll be back in his continuous attempts to pursue wildlife with more of his malicious schemes. So look out for the next exciting episode of Seabird. has had a hard day's fishing, and Seabird has had a hard day's playing. But now it's time to go home. Tommy and Seabird stroll home unaware of the strange adventure that is about to unfold, an adventure that will take them to the other side of the world. That was a fun day, huh, Seabird? Now let's have dinner. Good night, Seabird. Sleep well. been the North Pole? <laughs> That's a good one, boss. Shut up. Yeah, shut up. Did you plant the bug? Yep. Everything went like a dream. The kid and that seal thing were sound asleep. <laughs> That's why it went like a dream. Shut up. Yeah, shut up. Good. Now here's all we have to do. Sooner or later, those kids will get a call from someone who's got a rare animal of some sort that's in trouble. All we have to do is listen in on the conversation with the help of the super amplifier, and we've found ourselves a target. A target for what, boss? 
a kidnap target, which we will hold for ransom. Now, Sulfuric, you'll have to take the first watch. <laughs> I mean, the first listen. If you hear anything important, ring the bell. But, boss, I haven't even been to bed yet. You haven't heard anything useful yet. Now, get those earphones on and start listening. Now, ah, it's always me that gets the rotten jobs. I think I'll just have a little nap. <laughs> Dangerous. Wait, Seabird. I'll take care of him. Hmm? What is it? What's happened? What species is being threatened? Good grief. A greater bell-headed idiot. I think there's something wrong with the transmitter. It just exploded. My ears are still ringing. Hello, Tommy speaking. I'll be ringing you in a minute. Be quiet. Yes, of course. Tomorrow. Shh. Listen carefully. Someone's phoned. A panda. That's fantastic. From China all the way to France. Yes, thank you. I will. Goodbye now. Seabert. Do you know what a panda is? Well, tomorrow you'll find out, because we're going to meet one and travel to a zoo in Paris with him. And guess where we're going to meet him? Mongolia. Mongolia? Yes, Seaver. You're going to travel with the panda on a train to stop him from being frightened. You see, pandas are very rare in the wild. So if we can form groups of them in zoos, we can save them from extinction. So first thing tomorrow, we fly to Russia. There we will meet the train from China with the panda aboard. So, a panda, eh? Well, now that's what we'll kidnap. But how, boss? I'll tell you how. We will travel to Russia in disguise. Then Carbone and I will board the same train as Tommy. What about me, boss? You will find a getaway vehicle. When we've taken over the train, you'll meet us with it. Then we'll escape with the panda. I'll explain everything in the morning. Come on, we've got work to do. Well, Siebert, we're on our way. Isn't it exciting? We've never been to Russia before. Our panda will soon be safe. <laughs> Follow ski that cab ski. Tommy and Siebert, welcome, welcome. You've arrived safely. Good. Any moment now, the train will arrive with your special guest, the panda. Here, here are your tickets. Thank you, sir. Right, you. Sulfuric, you know what you have to do. Yeah, yeah, I have to meet you with the getaway vehicle at Omno Podski. Mm, okay. Get going and try to get it right. Look, Siebert. Here's the train now. Yes, Tommy. The panda will be at the end of the train in his own compartment. Here, climb aboard. Look, Siebert. There he is. Quick, you go and make friends with him. Good. He likes you. Hurry up, Carbon. Get aboard. The train's about to go. <laughs> Tommy, goodbye, Seabert. Good luck. Ha, good. Everything's going as planned. We're aboard, and the panda's aboard. Yep. I wonder where Sulfuric is now, boss. He had better be on his way to Omnipotsky with a getaway vehicle. Who are you? Joseph? I'm Sulfuric. Mikhail sent me. Mikhail, eh? He said you have a vehicle I can buy. Do you have the money? Uh, yeah. Here. Good. Here it is. 
Good luck. You'll need it. Oh, no! This thing's got no brakes! I'll try the handbrake. Whoa! Yeah? What do you want? Grigory sent me. I'm sulfuric. I'm Russian. Come in. Give me the money. A cat! Oh, no! Yeah? My name's Sulfuric. Boris sent me. Boris, eh? Don't tell me you come about the vehicle. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact. Got any money left? Left? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Here. Good. If you step through that door, the vehicle is waiting. Now, goodbye, my friend. Through the door, eh? Ah, uh, a light switch. I'll turn it on and... Oh! What is that? Oh, no! Smokey will kill me when he sees this! <laughs> now, what's this lever for? Go up! Ooh! Oh, Nabotsky! Here I come! Well, Siebert, it didn't take long for you two to become friends. Come on, time for bed. Tomorrow will be a long day. <laughs> Sorry, Siebert. Just push them out of the way. What is it? What's this you found? Yes, something's wrong here. We'd better warn the conductor. Hold the chain, Siebert. Hey, that's a call from the caboose. I'll fix that, kid. You go and stop the engine. Uh, right, boss. I'm ready. Be careful with that thing. Hooray! Next stop, Omnibotsky! I wonder where the conductor is. This'll be him now. Hello? I, er, we found something very strange on the bottom of my shoe. I think it's a bug. So, you've stepped on a bug. So what? No, no, I, I mean an electronic bug. Hmm, let me see. Yes, you're right, it is. What are you going to do? Oh, I'll probably write to the manufacturers and thank them. What? Uncle Smokey! In person. Good evening. <laughs> right on time. Well done, Carbon. Carbon? What's going on here? <laughs> it's a panda nap. <laughs> a panda nap? Yes, and you are kidnapped. So just sit down, kid, and take a nap. <laughs> Carbon, you there? Uh, yep. I'm ready, boss. Okay, uncouple the caboose. Then tell the engine driver to take off. Okay. What are you going to do? We're going to sell your furry friend over there to the highest bidder. But you can't. He's a protected species. Yes, and I'm going to protect him. <laughs> what will happen to the panda now? Will Tommy and Siebert be able to prevent Smokey's plans? And what about Sulfuric? Will he make it on time? For the blazes is that fool, Sulfuric. If he doesn't show up, I'll strangle him. That'll be hard if he's not here, boss. Quiet. Go and tie the kid up. Put that dirty little seal in the panda's cage. Okay, boss. I'm the Potsky, I'm the Potsky, I'm the Potsky, here I come. I knew something would go wrong. Why can't Sulfur... Hey! What's that? Carbon, there's a train coming! A train? I'm the Potsky, I'm the Potsky, I'm the... Ah! Where? No! There? Grr, grr. Ah! A Yeti! Ah! Boss! What are you doing down there? What is that? 
thing you're standing on. It's the getaway vehicle. Uh, yeah, better get away from it quick. <laughs> very funny. It happens to be very fast, and then made it here in one piece. All right, all right, stop arguing. Carbon, get the caboose hooked up. Okay, boss. She's ready to roll. Good. Start her up, Sulfuric. Move over and make some room. Which way are we going? Back that way. Two miles. There we'll find an old track, which leads to a deserted mine. Carbone, what's going on? Where are we going? Oh, you'll find out, kid. You'll never get away with this. That's where you're wrong. Look out the window. We are getting away with this. Okay, so far so good. Carbon, have you got the transmitter ready? Uh, yep, here it is. Okay, quiet, everybody. Hello, hello. This is the Panda Special calling. Is there anyone there? Panda Special calling. Is there anybody there? Come in. We hear you. What is it you want? Ha <laughs> ha, a million dollars for a panda. That's what I want. We're holding one for ransom. I'll keep him talking. You get the fix on their position. Ha, <laughs> they're thinking it over. We'll accept a near offer. A million dollars, you say? And where do you want us to meet you? On the Polsky. That's where they are. Good man. Come on, let's go and find them. So here's the deal, men. Tomorrow at midday, we'll meet them five miles from here at a railroad crossing, where we'll hand over the panda in exchange for the money. Uh, what happens now, boss? We get some sleep. We've all got to be wide awake tomorrow. Done, Siebert. Now I want you to go find help. I'll stay here with Pet Singh. Here, I'll just write this note. I just hope you find someone who speaks English. You'll have to climb out through that window, Siebert. Be careful of the drop. What's <laughs> up? my friend Tommy and a panda called Ped Zing. They have been kidnapped and are being held on a train in an old mine not far from here. Oh, Siebert, you are lucky. At my school, I learned to read and to speak your language. Come, I will help. Seal's gone. <clears throat> Fancy that. <sighs> right. ah! The seal's gone. Wake up, you oafs. Get out there and find him. Look, he went that away. The uh, sulfuric. I don't like this. Uh, I think we're being watched. Yeah. Look. Siebert's tracks stop here. Ah! Run, Carbone! The place is full of wolves! Uh, Help! Uh, Help! Uh, Save uh, us! Uh, Whoa! Don't worry about the wolves, Siebert. You are safe with me. Now, lead on to where you left your friends. So, this is the 
old silver mine they are in. Hmm. Come, Siebert. I know another way in. Good. There is the train. Now we have to get into the carriage. Ah, I have an idea. Siebert, help me. Now quick, Siebert. We must hide. Nice of you to drop in. Tea, anyone? What happened to the panda and Natasha? Natasha went home to her water mill with a reward from the zoo authorities. And Pet Singh finally arrived with us safely in his new home in Paris. Well, this story has ended happily for Siebert and his friends, but we in the real world must make sure that the panda's story never ends, as well as the story of many other endangered species which Tommy, Ara, and Siebert have worked so hard to protect. What other animals will need our friends' help? To find out, be sure to watch the next exciting episode of Siebert.
Discover a Dickens of a classic come to life in beautiful animation, Oliver Twist. Kids of all ages will love this classic tale translated to a beautiful animated video. Please, sir, I want some more. More, is it? Well, we have just the thing for you, Oliver. My name's Jack Dawkins, but I'm called the Artful Dodger. You can call me Dodger. I'm Oliver Twist. Is it gone? Here it is, sir. You're a clever boy, my dear. Here's a shilling for you. Join Oliver as he escapes from a workhouse where he was born, falls in with the artful dodger Fagin and his gang of kids, and travels the dangerous underworld of Victorian England. It's the Dickens masterpiece that's charmed millions for generations. When the little ones want literature, give them the Dickens with Oliver Twist. He'll steal your heart.